Welcome to the Therapy Show Podcast. I'm your host, Lisa Mustard. In each episode, I interview a seasoned and knowledgeable talk therapist from the counseling world to glean valuable insights, techniques, and tools that you can apply to your practice and your life. And if you're considering a career in the counseling field or just want to hear about what it's like to be a talk therapist, then this is the podcast for you. So in this week's episode, I'm talking about an issue that affects many of us in the mental health field, therapist burnout. And as therapists, we're trained to help others and support them through their struggles. But what happens when the support we offer takes a toll on our own mental and emotional well-being? And in this episode, Dr. Rachel Altvader joins me to share her experiences with burnout and offer practical tips for avoiding and overcoming it. So join us for a thought-provoking conversation on the important topic of therapist burnout. So if you haven't met Dr. Altvader, she's actually been on the show before. In fact, she did a pod course with me titled Back to the Basics, Grounding Theory and Virtual Play Therapy. And you can actually earn one continuing education contact hour when you listen to that pod course and take the self-study quiz. I'll link in the show notes where you guys can find that episode. But a little bit about her. She is an award-winning pioneering expert, leader, researcher, international trainer, author, and supervisor in the field of play therapy. She is a licensed psychologist in Maryland, Washington, D.C., and Virginia, and holds a national certification as a registered play therapist supervisor and certified clinical trauma professional. She is the owner of Creative Psychological Health Services, co-owner of North Star Creations, past president of the Maryland, D.C. Association for Play Therapy, editorial advisory board member for the International Journal of Play Therapy, advisory board member for digital play therapy and ascendant VR clinical consultant and content creator for cognitive leap and instructor for hopscotch. Dr. Altvader recently authored the book perspective contemplating the complexities of our realities. She published her research in the international journal of play therapy on technology use and play therapy and is a contributing author in numerous scholarly texts on implementing digital technologies and play therapy practice. So as you can see, she is a very, very busy woman. So I really enjoyed having her on the podcast and talking about burnout. I can't think of anybody who's busier out there in the world of therapy and research. And as an author, a brand new author, and I'm going to link her uh, book in the show notes. So you guys definitely check it out. It looks really interesting. It's I'll just read you a little bit about it. This psychological self-insight think book aims to shed light on the complexity of human perspective. Each person filters their perceptions and reality through their thoughts, feelings, and experience. And the method in which we view the world ourselves and one another varies person to person. That's just a little bit about the book. I know I can't wait to dive into that book. I love the topic so far. So we hope you enjoy this episode and get great value out of it. Well, hey friends, welcome back to another episode. This week's guest is a repeat guest. I'm really excited to have her back. Welcome to welcome back, Dr. Rachel Altvader. It's so exciting and wonderful to have you on the show again. Thank you so much. It is such a joy speaking with you and being here with everyone. So thank you so much for having me back. I can't wait to talk about whatever we end up talking about yeah, here. Yeah, I know. We were just talking about an unscripted podcast episode. We have a general idea of where we are going to take this, but I honestly, like, we're just going to see what what comes. Um, I do want to encourage folks that if you don't know who Doc Vader is, she recently did a pod course for the show and it is called Back to the Basics, Grounding Theory and Virtual Play Therapy, where she talks about if you're a play therapist, uh, wanting be, wanting to become a play therapist, um, understanding your theory that you're going to be working out of and how to find it as, as a clinician. So it's a great episode head back to, you know, the archives of the podcast and and give it a look. And it does qualify for one continuing education contact hour. So if you're looking for something new and fresh out there, it's just a great episode, but okay. So, so much has, has happened recently. Um, did you, did you open up another location? Is that right? Yeah. Okay. (laughs) Yeah. Tell us about what's going on for you. Yeah. So I own a practice called a creative psychological health services And I opened uh, the practice in 2018, started seeing clients in 2019 and opened up my practice, my first practice location in Catonsville, Maryland, which is actually my hometown. So it's giving back to my roots, which is so meaningful to me. And then I recently moved and decided to expand the practice a little bit closer to where I live now uh, in Frederick, Maryland. So the practice specializes in plain expressive based therapies. Uh, We also specialize in digital technologies, incorporating digital tools into sessions with clients. We have a whole 
uh, like digital therapy room with VR headsets. Very exciting. Oh, very cool. Yeah. And we have an art therapy room. So it's really exciting. We're expanding all the services. Mm -hmm. Uh, I really want to have a practice that incorporates a variety of expressive based therapies. And we have some interest with uh, other therapies, uh, maybe having a drama therapist um, and just other creative based methods for working through psychological difficulties. Right. And passion for sure. Mainly for children, right? Or do you, are you seeing adults as well? We see all ages. We do specialize in child and adolescent mental health. Most of the clients are children and adolescents, but really it's for anybody. Um, And even play therapy is not necessarily just reserved for children. Play is a child's natural mode of communication. Children are able to process a bit more easily, developmentally speaking, through play. And it's it's pretty special to have adults uh, channel their their playful side as well and can be quite healing and even even healing their inner children mm-hmm. that's not the only thing but you know that definitely that comes out a lot i've noticed mm-hmm. healing the inner parts of ourselves yeah um that's that's something else i mean that's really really neat and so how did you, so how is it going in terms of like managing all of these moving parts i mean Wow. It's a lot. Yeah. Full transparency. I just mentioned right before our, our talk, I was in my own therapy session and I think it's so important to find balance. And I pick a word of the year. My word of this year has been alignment. Mm -hmm. So I focus on everything that's alignment with myself and my passions and, you know, all that I want to do while also making sure I'm finding balance. And I, I feel like I got to a pretty good place with my balance, but then it started to get a little wobbly once things expanded, you know, during transitions, life is a bit more challenging. So, uh, you know, it's, I don't know if I'm really answering your question. I think that the balance has been a little bit more challenging. So I've had to take intentional efforts to make sure to balance the alignment and, um, you know, also saying no to things, which is hard for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I hear you. I'm I'm the same way. How did you know that you were out of alignment? Like what showed up for you? I'll say for sure. Um, I start to get pretty aggravated. <laughs> There's this internal gauge that I start to feel a little bit more impatient. I start to become annoyed with things that don't really typically annoy me so easily. Very minor things. The good thing is I'm pretty aware and I'm very in tune with myself. So I listen to that. I think a lot of times we miss those signs and then we don't necessarily realize why we're responding in a certain way, or it's easier to say that it's maybe something outside of ourselves, but I start to recognize when things are feeling a little off and I'm kind of losing that sense of equilibrium internally and, um, and being in my own therapy is really helpful to process that. Yeah. I think that's really the thing feeling a little off kilter. Yeah. I think, I think that's really wise. You're able to pay attention to that that feeling or that voice inside of you that get, you said aggravated, is that what it was? Yeah. And start to feel impatient. Yeah. I, I think, um, I know that we had originally had said we were going to talk about burnout, you know, as therapists and it's a really hot topic. Like, I feel like everybody wants to talk about burnout or they're looking for ways to cope with burnout. And I feel like burnout, when it hits you, it's almost too late. Like I was <laughs> thinking that literally just now I was thinking that yeah. like, we know when we're burnt out when we're burnt out. <laughs> right. Right. But we don't recognize it as we're heading along that path of burnout in, um, I wonder what, what that is, what that's about. Like, we don't, we don't take care of our own needs. We don't, we don't set boundaries. Is it just like, do you think it's because we're therapists and we think, oh, we can handle it all. And we, we have all these resources internally, externally, but eventually you hit a wall with it and you're like, you can't, can't do it anymore. Absolutely. I agree with that. And also I think a lot of times we compare ourselves to others. Mm-hmm. We can't help but do that as human beings. That's part of our human nature. And I think so many times people will look outside themselves and say, how does this person have it all together? What's wrong with me? Or, you know, I should keep pushing, right? We, sh- we should all over the place. <laughs> and and then there's a, a lack of self-compassion. Mm-hmm. There's all of these internal expectations. And so I think sometimes we also turn off that gauge that starts to signal to us that something isn't quite right, or we're feeling a little off balance because I need to keep up with everybody else, or, you know, there must be something wrong with me. And so I need to insert some 
lack of self-compassion statement there, right? Like some, just saying something unkind to ourselves. And I wonder if that's a big part of it too. Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. And I think that, you know, the whole comparison game is that's in the past, that would be something for me, you know, like I would say, I'm this age, I should be at this point in my life and I'm not there yet. So I feel X, Y, and Z about myself or, you know, the accomplishments I do have. And I mean, it, it's, it, it can be pretty, I don't know what the word is sad and and depressing at times, you know, for, for many people it's hard. It can be hard. And you mentioned the accomplishments. I think that's actually another really big thing too. There is this constant push to do more. And when is enough enough? And I've gotten to that place. I've done so, so many different things that I am so excited and passionate about. And then it's always on to the next, on to the next, on to the next, you know, and I think even as therapists, there's a huge encouragement within the field to seek credentials, which is understandable and great and helpful. And I have credentials and, you know, I, I, I advocate for that. And I've also noticed that a lot of therapists that I speak to feel like they have to, Mm -hmm. I have to seek more credentials. I mean, we have to seek more training, right? Regardless, we have to keep maintain our licenses, have CE credits. Absolutely. But I think there's a lot of expectation. Well, you can't do X, Y, and Z unless you have this particular credential um, or follow through with all these specific trainings. Now I do want to acknowledge in order to provide competent care in some avenues, it is necessary. Right. Right. So I want to acknowledge that. And when there is this constant thought of, I need to do more, I need to seek more, 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 more. Then we, we start to feel even more overwhelmed on top of all of the personal things going on Mm -hmm. in our lives during an ongoing global trauma experience Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and national trauma experiences, right? So it's just, we're piling on, we're piling on. And then we maybe learn how to compartmentalize, but we're constantly pouring into everything, our clients, our families, our friends, our trainings, our everything. And then when do we actually make time to pour into ourselves? Like that's usually the first thing that goes. Yeah, that's so true. That's really true. And I noticed that, um, when my self-care starts to, you know, I put it aside, that's when I, that's a sign for me, like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Like if you're going to trade this, you're going to say yes to this thing, but that means you can't, you know, get your, your exercise in or, you know, plan your healthy meals for your family. Like, no, that stuff always comes first. Cause that's my self-care. That's how I make sure I am able to show up in my job and be, you know, good at what I do and help people. But yeah, there is this whole like, oh, more, 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 add this onto my plate. And, you know, it's funny, like as an entrepreneur, and I know you are, you know, that's who you are too. It's like, oh, well, I could do this or I could add into that. And I could, oh, that sounds interesting. Let me add that to my list of things that I do. And I think that there's, there's a lot of that out there too for therapists because so many, so many are in private practice and they're looking for other ways to like, you know, uh, maybe less time seeing clients and, and more time doing other things. And so they're trying to, okay, well, how do I, if I have to have this over here, take the place of that money. So I need to learn how to do all these things. And it's just overwhelming. It's like, oh, now I have to learn how to do. So, oh, it's like, it feels, it feels really hard, you know, hard sometimes to like have that plan and to want to move into something different and pivot a little bit, but yet when am I going to have the time to do it? Or how am I going to figure it out? And I'm already seeing, you know, 70 clients a week, <laughs> like that whole thing. Yeah. It's, it's a real thing. I mean, it, it, and I talked to a lot of peers who are, who are going through something like that. So it's tough. It's tough. And what do you say to people like that? When, when, you know, maybe in your own practice, your clinicians that are in your practice, like, what do you got? How do you talk to them about self-care and burnout? We hold each other accountable. And I was actually just thinking about that. I feel so aligned with you because <laughs> um, I was just thinking that, that I make sure to let all of my therapists know that you have to come first. And I was just reading something today about that, about how so many people struggle to put themselves first because there's this perception of, oh, you are self-centered. Oh, you know, you don't care about other people. That's not true. How can we take care of other people if we're not taking care of ourselves? And I know we understand this concept and anyone listening would be like, yeah, of course. But to actually exercise that concept, it's really challenging Oh yeah, because of all of the expectations. But I let all my therapists know, like, you have to take care of you first. My top priority with my practice is my therapists. 
And then my secondary focus is the clients Mm -hmm. because we can't nurture the clients sufficiently if the therapists aren't nurturing themselves sufficiently. Mm -hmm. So we, we meet weekly for a, a group meeting, those who are able to attend. And we talk about a variety of different things. You know, it's really kind of a whatever is needed on, on each day, you know, sometimes it's providing support to one particular clinician. Sometimes it's providing case consultation. Sometimes it's talking about just random admin stuff at the practice. And sometimes it's solely dedicated to self-care. What are you all doing to, to nurture your minds and bodies? And a lot of times it's like crickets and I'm like, okay, so what are we going to do right now (laughs) to make sure that we're nurturing ourselves? Yeah. If you don't have time to do it, then we're making time right now. Yeah. See, That's awesome. And schedule it, right? No, only schedule it though. Let me give the caveat because I say schedule it. And then as soon as I say that, I have a little butt. (laughs) Yeah. Um, Schedule it if you feel like you don't have the time so you can see that the time is there. Prioritize that, right? Like I prioritize my therapy every week. Mm -hmm. It is on my schedule and nothing is going to be taking over that. It's in my schedule. But sometimes I do run into the issue. If I schedule self-care, it feels like another to do. So that it's not actually self-care mm-hmm. feeling, right. even though it is, if that makes sense, like it yeah. is self-care. So make sure that you're listening to yourself. If adding something else on your list is not helpful and it actually feels like another to do, don't do that. Mm-hmm. Right. And if you feel like you know, I don't have the time, sit down on your schedule and see what you can make work. Um, you know, I, I know e- even if it's five minutes, you know, even if you start five minutes a week, like you don't have to, to deep dive into an hour a day, right? Like that's probably not really realistic. We want to make realistic goals. Start small. Even if you stare at the wall for five minutes, <laughs> it doesn't sound the most fun, but you know, if you're pausing and you're breathing, self-care. Need continuing education contact hours? If so, be sure to check out my pod courses. Currently, there are 12 to choose from and they cover a variety of topics. You can learn about play-based strategies to support black youth experiencing racial trauma, virtual play therapy. You can learn about eating disorders, addiction treatment, and incorporating self-care into your practice and your life, plus many, many more. And I'm giving you your first one at 50% off, so head to my site, lisamustard.com forward slash pod courses to grab that coupon code. So how do pod courses work? You can listen anytime, anywhere to the audio content for free before purchasing the pod course. And if you decide you want the CE contact hour, you'll then purchase the pod course from my site, take the self-study quiz, pass it and download your certificate of completion. So head to lisamustard.com forward slash pod courses to check out all of the pod courses and listen for free. You can also see a list of frequently asked questions on the site and you can always get in touch with me if you have more questions. And by the way, Mustard Consulting LLC is a NBCC approved provider. Right. Yeah. And I like to add in if you are in a warm, well, a place that a climate that's not, you know, too cold. Like I live in South Carolina. I'm like, you can go outside and just get some five minutes of fresh air in between your clients. I mean, that does amazing wonders for me. It just refreshes me, you know, fresh air, like just being outside, seeing something green, touching something that's, you know, a plant or, I mean, just, it really does bleed, you know, don't go outside and then pick up your phone and look at your phone that can actually, I think, make it worse. But, um, yeah, it just, it does get me thinking about like, what are some things that you can do that are just, you know, short and helpful. And, um, I have this new app on my phone. Where's my phone? It's, um, it's called mindfulness app and it kind of every morning it'll send me a reminder, you know, you've got a three minute mindfulness thing you can do and you can pick your topic. And then at night it'll help you kind of like wind down. And I just, I just love it. I feel like it's just like, Oh, time for me to go be mindful and meditate. So I'll be back in a few minutes. And I mean, I look forward to it every morning when it goes off and then at night, you know, before I go to bed, I'm like, what, what are they going to give me today? <laughs> I love it. A present on your phone. Yeah, it is. It's so great. And then I was also thinking about, you know, being outside and going for a walk, just, just getting out and listening to music or listening to a podcast that doesn't have to do with therapy is always, I think, you know, of course, listen to my show, but <laughs> when you want something different, you know, I love, I love finding something new to listen to or just like, you know, a new, some new music or I don't know, just explore and, and see what 
what's out there that you can tap into. I'm trying to think of other things that I, I do during the day when I just have a little bit of time for, you know, where I'm like intentionally going to do some self-care right now, but I don't have it. I don't know what I want to do. Do you have any other things that you like to do? Yeah. I mean, I have created spaces in my home that are very relaxing for me. That was something that I wanted to make sure to do for myself to have not necessarily like an escape place, but like a, an oasis. That's, that's a good word. Like a little oasis space. It doesn't have anything fancy, right? Like you just something, um, that, that feels good. I have uh, a little sand tray set up space, like a little personal tray. And so in expressive therapy work, uh, you can play with sand. Mm -hmm. I'm simplifying it immensely just because this isn't the focus, but I want to share then I have a bunch of little toys that I can put in the sand and create little stories or worlds or just process some of my internal experiences. So I have a little space set up for that. I have um, a little swingy chair that I wanted to get because it felt like a little holding space. I have a weighted unicorn that my best friend gifted to me and I will just put it on my stomach and kind of apply a little bit of pressure. And I've learned a bit more about the benefits of uh, weighted blankets and, um, and I'm, I'm blanking on the name, but like deep, some stimulation. Um, I forget what it's actually called, but I, I've been reading a bit more about the actual effects of our body when we have the weighted stuffed animals or weighted blankets and how helpful it is for our nervous system. Oh, that's cool. I also really love to listen to chill step it's like dubstep, but mm -hmm. chill. Oh, okay. <laughs> so like dancey music, mm -hmm. but calm. Oh, and cool. um, I've learned that I have a very obsessive brain. I think about things over and over and over and over again. And the music is very repetitive and calming. So it feeds some of those obsessive tendencies in my brain. And I think that's something that's so important. Figure out what your brain and body do. And instead of shaming Mm -hmm. lean into it mm -hmm. like full transparency when I realized came more to terms with the fact that my brain is quite obsessive I immediately thought oh my gosh what's wrong with me because that's the way that we've been taught that there's something wrong it's pathological versus we're humans and we're all dealing with things in a different way and how do we deal with things or how do we experience things and then how can we nurture that so instead of rejecting the parts of ourself that feel not so comfy to us mm -hmm. actually recognizing that it's there for whatever reason is needed for our body and provide it what it needs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, I like that. That's, that's some, that's some gold right there. I like that. I'm just kind of, you know, thinking about my week and <laughs> my, my family and just kind of like what we've, what we've been going through. And it's, it's a really easy to see something in yourself or in, in a family member that, I'm children that you're like, Oh, that's not, that's not okay. Like we need to, we need to like bring that in and fix that where it's like, no, it's just not necessarily. It's just a sign of how that person shows up in the world and that's who they are. And we can, we can nurture it. You know, we don't have to like try to fix it. We can just see it differently. I, I really like that. I appreciate that. Thank you for that yeah. re reframe. Absolutely. Um, I think it's yeah. so important too, just to normalize the human experience. Mm -hmm. You know, when it comes to the things that we do, the ways that we feel, the self-care, like comparing all of these different things, it's so easy for us to not really realize that we're we're not really alone. I know all of our experiences can be unique or or vary a bit. And at the end of the day, we're all humans living a human experience mm -hmm. in a very complex world. Right. And just normalizing that I think helps decrease some of the pressure that we're applying to ourselves. Mm -hmm can also mitigate the burnout. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And also too, we know our, we're not evolutionary in evolutionarily speaking, I guess we're just not wired for all these like things coming at us all the time. You know, we're really not like, and, and so like getting off of social media and turning off the computer and stopping that flow of information, or I don't even know if it's information anymore, just stuff coming at you has been like, I didn't, I didn't realize how much I was trying to like take in and make meaning and make sense out of it was, it was so overwhelming. I go mm -hmm. from one feeling to the next and it would, you know, change my mood. It would change my, um, 
everything in a matter of just a few minutes. And I just don't think we're, we're, we're wired that way to take it all in. I mean, have you had that experience where, you know, you just, it's like, no, this, this doesn't feel good. This doesn't, this isn't, I don't think we're supposed to take this all in. Absolutely. And I think something that's so important is intentionality, Mm -hmm. like being intentional with what we're consuming, Mm -hmm. when we're consuming it, how we're consuming it. I follow a lot of therapy practices and therapists on social media. Now, of course, that's our profession. So, you know, it's just kind of a natural, a natural thing that occurred, but it also really uplifts my newsfeed. Mm -hmm. The amount of inspiration and support that I receive in my feeds is really appreciated. And for me, when I'm having a hard time, I really like to find inspirational quotes. You know, I try to have a mindset that is a bit more uplifting, even when I'm feeling pretty heavy. Or if I'm in a a darker space, I try to find something that can kind of push me in a more positive direction, not toxic positivity, not to remove the the experience, but to, to try to, to transition a bit or to have some sense of hopefulness in that moment. But I really try to consume things intentionally. So I will jump on TikTok when I want to avoid and laugh. <laughs> right. Like I am very intentional about that. I will not go on and just mindlessly scroll. I'm like, I'm going to go on for 10 minutes and I'm just going to scroll through and I want to laugh. And fortunately, because of the content that I interact with, that then creates a feed for me that has a lot more of that content. So I think that's something too, if we're doom scrolling, we're spending a lot of time in these spaces, then that's, what's going to continue to be fed to us. Right. Pensionality, I think is a really big thing when it comes to this, but absolutely with what you're saying, you know, I think that's something we all experience. And, um, and even if we're in a, a, maybe a darker space and people are celebrating all of these things because, you know, social media is a highlight reel. Then it goes back to what's wrong with me. And then again, that can can further burn out and, you know, what is wrong with the things I'm doing and I'm not enough and all that perpetuates some of those messages. So Mm -hmm. just being mindful and intentional with what you're consuming and recognizing how you're feeling and seeing what you can do to adjust what Mm -hmm. is being fed to you, what you're consuming. Yeah. That's, that's very wise. And I like how you say, you go on TikTok to laugh. I get on Instagram to watch uh, animal <laughs> videos. Oh, I love my daughter and I just like, we'll get on Instagram together and scroll like the different dog videos or, you know, silly things that the dogs are doing. And I just love that. I guess, cause secretly I really want Lulu to have her own Instagram page, <laughs> but just trying to like organize all that really overwhelms me and stresses me out. So it'll never happen, but I like to imagine that, you know, maybe one day I'll have one for my dog. Um, but yeah, you, like you said, it's really important. It's in being intentional about why are you getting on this and what are you, what are you going to do with it? And if it, if it brings you down or stresses you out, then unfollow, stop what you're, you know, just stop. Like you don't have to follow people because at one point you were interested in what they were doing. I mean, I, I do it all the time. Like I'm just unfollowing people all the time and nothing, it's not that I don't like the person. It's just it. No, I don't want to do that anymore. And that's, that's one of the cool things about it, I guess, is you can, you can pick and choose what shows up. Like you said, in your feed, that's, that's really wise. Do you have any like recommendations or uh, books that you've read about self-care or podcasts that you listen to? So, you know, I actually don't really read a lot. (laughs) I mean, I do, I do, but for like academic writing. So I kind of reserve a lot of my reading for that, but I will say that, um, Dr. Kristen Neff has a really great website, a self-compassion website. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a really beautiful place to start. And and she has some books, uh, about self-compassion. I I believe there might even be a self-compassion workbook. So I, I love that for connecting to ourselves and being kind and gentle to ourselves. I really do think that self-care starts there. So I would recommend that. You know, I also actually, it's funny. I said, I didn't like to read, but now I'm thinking I I like poetry. So there's a lot of different professionals or um, artists on Instagram that I like to follow, like uh, Morgan Harper Nichols. Goodness, there's a young Pueblo. There's a couple of people that I follow and they have books and I've actually purchased a couple of them. And they're poetry books. Mm -hmm. So I, and that kind of aligns with me liking to look for quotes and inspirational things. So, um, so I do like, I do like some of that. 
terms of podcasts, I consume a lot of chill step music for my brain. A lot of times I am working on things. And so if I focus on a podcast, what people are saying, then it takes away from me being able to focus on what I'm working on. So I don't have any set podcasts aside from yours, of course, oh, thanks. Um, <laughs> that, that I would recommend um, off the top of my mind. Oh, that's, that's okay. I was just wondering, I can't listen to podcasts when I'm working either. Like I have to, I reserve podcasting for like when I'm making dinner or on a walk or at the gym, I just, or in the car without my kids. Like I just can't listen to a podcast and try to do work at the same time. It's too much. I can't like, I don't know. I can't listen and be present for both, you know, because we're fully present. That's the thing. I know that we can multitask and I listen intently. Mm-hmm. Like I might not remember people's names, but I will remember intricate details about things that people have shared with me from years ago yeah. because I listen so closely. Mm-hmm. So if, if someone's talking to me yeah. while I'm focused on something else, I'm not able to listen as intently. Right. Yeah. That's like a therapist superpower right there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we hope you're listening to what they're saying. <laughs> and listen to yourself. That's yeah. the message here today. Make sure to yourself just as much as you listen to other people. Make sure you're nurturing yourself just as much as you nurture other people. Make sure that you love yourself just as much as you love other people. It does take intentionality. It takes time. It takes effort. It takes balance. It takes alignment and it takes time. I love that. That was just a beautiful way to to wrap up a topic on self-care. Listen to yourself, be intentional, be aware. Um, Well, thank you so much for coming back on the show and sharing your good stuff. It's Now, once again, where can people find you if they want to learn more? So my website for my practice is creativepsychological.com. And then I have a Beacons page, which is similar to Linktree for those of you who are familiar. So it's beacons.ai slash Doc Vader. And Vader is with a T, not a D. I know it sounds like a D, but. (laughs) I will make sure I spell your name correctly in the show notes and put, I'll put all your links in there as well. Well, thank you so much, Doc Vader. It has just been a pleasure to have you back. Thank you so much. This has been so lovely and make sure you take care of yourself too. I will. I'm going to go do some of that right now. Well, that wraps up another episode of the therapy show with Lisa Mustard. I know there are hundreds of thousands of podcasts out there and I'm thankful you've chosen to listen to mine. Be sure to visit lisamustard.com to access the show notes and discover more fantastic content. And I'd be grateful if you subscribe to the show. Thank Thank you. you.